What are we looking at here? What we're looking at here is what happens when you try to hot dip blue a set of shotgun barrels. And I'll tell you what, you wind up with this bilge. So let's go find out which person messed this thing up, how they messed it up, and how I plan to get them out of it at great personal expense. Let's get down the rabbit hole because this is going to be a fairly significant trip this time. This is going to be kind of hard to see because the total workpiece is about 28 inches long and it's hard. So we're focused right here. And I've tried to clean the background up a little bit. In fact, I'm going to turn this around so that that blue, you see more of the blue. And that'll give me something up against here. You can see down here and right here, there's a line of solder that's actually tinned to the barrel in a very narrow line. But it's missing from here to here. It's missing in these spots. There's a lot of spots where the solder is missing. Pulling back the focus now to this point, and I'm gonna play with the light here a little bit so you can really see it. There was nothing, there was nothing in here, nothing. There was no tinning, nothing, all the way back here. There was a little bit here on this side, and to be honest to God, we're lucky that these things were actually still held together at the back end, because I'm gonna tell you what, up here at the muzzle, they're not held together at all. So let me get the light behind this right here and we can catch, we're catching daylight, look at that. So now the problem becomes, and there's gonna be a lot of people yelling at me, well, the barrels could be off that way or they could be off that way and it'll affect the patterning. Okay, I'll believe that. I will tell you that nothing back here got molested and the barrels didn't get Bent. So I'm about willing to tell you that where they touch is going to matter. We're going to switch camera angles here. This is hard to show, but you can see a silver line right here. And that's where I took this barrel and just took a very, very slight file and nicked it. We're going to face these muzzles back off when this is all done, but all we have to do is loosen up this vise a little bit, and I'm telling you what, I can twist the living crap out of this. So this is the real challenge, is gonna to be to lock this down. And that's where they wanna be. If you were really crazy, and this was a big money shotgun, an H&H &H or a Parker, we'd be laying this set of tubes down on a flat block, and we'd have it touching in four points. We'd do all that. This is a Riverside gun. It's basically a crescent, and all I'm trying to do is get this thing back to where it was when I saw it the first time, and I will elaborate on that story as we go along. I've come in now and I've prepared one side of this rib just so I can show you the difference and we'll come back and look. This is smooth and shiny all along its surface. This is chopped up, it's got rust, it needs to adhere to this surface right here and it's, that needs to be combed down. Now, I did this yesterday and for a lot of reasons I need to do it again because in the one day that this has been sitting in my shop microscopic rust is beginning to form not only is microscopic rust film forming on this any oil rust anything in a solder joint will deter it the other thing is the torch is not your friend half of what comes out of this torch is water vapor water vapor you see it on the lens yeah it kind of obscures the view of all the ugliness behind it but remember that that water vapor comes out of this because it's going to mess our solder joints up so this set of tubes has been conserved and we're going to have to go wire wheel all that off then i'm going to sandblast these things and come back in here and with a three-corner scraper we're going to scrape all of this off we're gonna come back in and take this solder off down to the bottom, down to the steel, um, and then we'll retin. But the first thing we're gonna do is go take all of this rust and blast it off of these barrels. Now on a blued set of barrels, you can do this and not mess up the blue, but these tubes have had so much heat put on them because the hot salts process is hot enough to melt this solder. 
and it melded all of it. It melded the barrel hook here, it melded everything. So let me go sandblast these. I'll be right back. I'm just gonna throw them in a sandblaster and fry them so that I'm looking at naked steel. Returning from the sandblaster, you can see that we got all this off of it. There's a clock running on this job right now because the sandblaster blasts it off, but the atmospheric moisture begins to reattack almost instantly. So when you commit to do a job like this, you've got to get on it. You can't clean these things yesterday. So let me get under over the top. Here we go. There's the solder right there on the bottom. And then there's a very, very thin line here, and it just ends. There's nothing in the back. There's nothing right here. Now, this is where the issue is. You just can't come in here with a torch and lay a torch down on this and start throwing heat at it because these tubes are cold. And that water bloom that we were talking about will throw water on this and it will instantly begin to rust. So you need to heat these tubes up ever so slightly. You only got to get them up to about 140, 150 degrees where the water will not condense out of the air on this. That's the trick. So we start heating them up with a, uh, with a hot air gun. We'll just take my, we'll take my Mark 1 Mod Zero hot air gun here and we'll get them warm. That'll happen in a little bit. We got to do all of our prep first. This view is the best way I can describe this. The silver surface up here is what we're going to lay the solder on. And the dark surface is what we don't want to lay the solder on. Um, and in this particular case, there is this is the breech end, and there's almost nothing here. So if you're a right-handed guy, you take the tail of the file and you put it in the right. And we're just going to draw a file off. Now, in my, my view, I'm running my eyes in like this, and I'm watching the light bounce off of it. And we've tried to replicate that with the camera, and I can't. What I'm looking for is this has to be 100% shiny now this is a really aggressive file and i'm actually leaving i don't want to polish this this is one of the few times you're doing something with a file you want to be a little bit rough be careful that we're not recontouring the rib we're just trying to knock all of this mung off the side of it here's some extra solder here and this solder's soft you can cut it with a knife i mean it'll right there it'll come right off okay so we want to prep this entire rib all the way down. Now, you got to be careful. You don't just grab it with your thumbs and haul it. You can't touch it. You got to move it from the other side of the vise because you can't touch what you've already done. So we'll slide that out a little bit more. Now this is a side I did not do yesterday. Just making sure I get it all. Now, one of the things that solder will not stick to is Sharpie marker. So let's look at this. Here's the top face of the rib. Here's the side face of the rib that we don't want anything to stick to. And while we're doing this solder joint, everything gets nasty. And one of the best ways to finish one of these things is to not screw it up in the first place. So that's why I've left everywhere I don't want the solder rusty. But to really make sure, I lay on a layer of Sharpie marker right where I don't want it. The Sharpie acts as a resist and the solder will not stick to it. So I've got a layer of black Sharpie right there. Let me get this lit right so you can actually see it. And then there's that silver line. So the silver line on top is where we want the solder, and the black line on the bottom is where we don't. Now this entire rib is prepped like this. The barrels are prepped like this. So the first thing we're going to do here light off this hot air gun, and we're going to heat this rib up above the dew point in the room. So when we heat it the rest of the way up with the hot air gun, we don't get that moisture bloom. And once you begin, the heat will move far enough out in front that it won't stick anymore. It won't uh, condense anymore. But bear in mind what we're doing here, we're going to do for the rest of the rib, but for the sacred of brevity, I'm going to show you what we got here.
get that good and hot. This is not a hair dryer. It's a hot air gun. Again, the gun guys are going to wail on me, but this is just regular paste flux and regular 6040 rosin core radio solder. But you can't solder ribs on a shotgun with rosin flux and rosin solder. You've got to have acid. Nonsense. You have to have a clean surface. And what the acid does is eats down through all of your hand oils and keeps you from being stupid. In our case, we're just going to prepare a nice clean surface. You can put this on with a brush. But what I found is, is that brushes, the bristles will melt and then melted bristle is just like a finger. So what I've got here now is I've got some flux on this and it has wetted the entire surface. And we're just going to warm this up and there's no bloom forming on it now. You can't melt the solder in the flame. The metal has to melt the solder. Put that little bit on there. Not a tremendous amount of heat, you see. Now we're gonna have to we're gonna change camera angles here so that you can actually see the solder going on. Rolling back in here, we can see that if the solder's hot enough and we touch it with the flux, you get this shiny, it almost looks like a mirror right where the solder is sticking. Now we didn't get it all the way up here, and remember the vise is sucking heat out on us. So we're only gonna be able to get to within about an inch or two of the vise, and then we're gonna have to reposition this. Not a lot of heat. You only got to get this thing up to about 300 degrees. You're turning the metal blue. You're getting too hot. Now that shiny mirror surface is a layer of lead tin solder and now it won't rust. Keep your fingers off it, but right now your clock stops on the rust. You can check it like this forever. I will finish this rib and we'll come back to the barrels. I've captured the muzzle end of the barrels in the vise here because the first thing we're going to want to do before we do anything else is trap this alignment. We have the two indicator marks. Now I'm going to use a little bit of crocus cloth here and be careful that you don't come too far around this or you'll start putting horizontal sanding marks out here where they have to be removed later. So remember one of the very, very prime things to not screw in one of these things up is to not screw it up. So all I'm gonna do here is just rough this up in here because the barrels are only gonna touch for about the last two inches or so. What I'm doing now is sanding off any residual um, rust. Okay, a little bit more. Not much, you don't have to kill it. You just got to get it clean. And we're going to take our stick here and we're going to run some flux in this gap. And we're going to make sure that when I let these barrels touch each other again, we're going to have some flux in the gap here and all we're going to do is put a blob of solder up here just as a place keeper so that these things aren't walking all over the place and screwing up our alignment down there at the breach and everything i'm telling you is hard won knowledge gunsmithing is an event driven process it is not a time driven process i've already hot air gunned them off camera i did that i just warmed them up and all i'm doing I got that little dab of solder sticking up there and I'm just going to warm these up until that little dab of solder melts. Do not want to melt the solder with the, ah, there it goes, you see, so I should be able to just lay the solder on the back side of this steel and have it just disappear in here and there we go. Perfect. You see that little blob of solder in there? 
Now that little blob of solder has not adhered to both walls of the barrel yet. We're not quite there. When you get it hot, you just hit it with a little bit of flux. And bang, you get a nice good heavy duty joint down in there. Bang, right there. So we got just a little bit of solder on both sides of this. Just to hang on to this thing. There we go. All right, so that's enough for the muzzles. We'll come back and clean all that up. This is just a tack joint. When we get all done, by the time we get the bottom rib on this thing and the bottom top, this will be a solid blob of solder from about here up. So three different gunsmiths worked on this thing and they learned how to solder or they were trying to learn how to solder on this rib. So all I'm doing here is cleaning this off and making a shiny spot yeah, right there. You can see that line. It's like a gray line there. Now, there's handprints all over this thing, but I've been assiduously avoided touching these ribs down in here where all of this is. Be very, very careful when you're filing that you're not nicking up the barrel outside of the line of where the, where the solder is going to touch. And then once we would get that cleaned up, I'm going to rotate this just a little bit. And again, with the Sharpie marker, I'm gonna lay this Sharpie line down where I don't want the solder to go. And that's gonna really simplify cleanup later on because this'll be all those places. These'll be little silver spots um, where, the, where the solder was when you go to blue these things. What a pain in the neck. So we're right back to it's easier to fix things that you haven't screwed up in the first place. All right, so now you can see the black that I've laid on that there. Now it really shows up. And the only place we want the solder is inboard of that. And then it's just the same deal that we did. Ordinarily, back in the day, to get these tubes hot, they would have taken a bar of iron, probably about a half an inch in diameter. They'd have taken a bar of iron got it red hot and laid it up inside the tube like that and let that red heat warm everything up and then the whole thing would just solder itself together all at once. I don't have a forge that big. I do have an induction rig and I'm not showing you all that because um, the average guy that might have the skills to pull this off doesn't have one of those. And as you all know, if you've been watching my videos for a while, my whole point is, is that you don't need thousands of dollars of high-speed kit to pull this off. I put this blue towel in the background to try to give us a little better background. The background was so busy it's hard to see it. The rib has been prepped and it's silver down both sides. Everything that's black here is either sharpie or there's a little bit of just uh, burned flux down there. But everything that's silver is actually um, uh, tin plated, tin lead plated. This is going to have to slip into here. And where, where we're going to have an advantage in this case is since we've tinned both pieces, we've only got to get this piece of rib just hot enough to melt the lead. We don't have to get all of this hot. This whole thing doesn't have to be a smoking flaming mess. Now, I'm pulling this blue sheet back off again just because, well, all my tools are under it. Hang on a minute. All right. We'll throw that up there. So everything's been prepped. Now we're gonna to get to the point where we can throw a little bit of heat to this thing. So one of the things I did was, is I put a bow in this so that it bends up. This rib is a slight bow to it. So as we run down the barrel, we're gonna be ironing it out flat. If it's the other way around, you get humps in it. And when, when they get the humps in it, it's very hard to close those up because if we press down on this, we're gonna have a wedging action that's trying to make the barrel split apart and we don't wanna press down very hard. We only wanna press down just hard enough that we can hang on to what we're doing. So off camera, I'm aligning a clamp here. Now this is just a rough position clamp and that clamp's gonna keep everything from moving around on us. And because we have this reverse curve bent in it, this is actually kind of spring-loaded down, and I don't need to push on this very hard. 
So all it is, is just a matter now of heating it up. Now I've seen this done with wire loops wrapped around it and all that other stuff. And I'll get into that as we get down to the other end. I'll show you why I'm not a big fan of that. And I'm going to get, not troll, but I know I'm going to get other people that claim to be London trained gunsmiths and all that other stuff. And that's great, except for the fact that at the end of the day, this is not a very expensive shotgun and we don't have two days to set these ribs. All right, so let me put some, let me put some heat on this thing here and we'll let all this stuff flow out. Now, if we did our homework and we did this right, all we're gonna have to do is put a little bit of heat on it. Get my flux up here. Put a little bit of flux on it and it should all just join together. So you start back here at the breech end and you throw the heat back on here at the breech end. And all you're doing is heating up the rib. And once that solder melts, it should just pop back in there. So we do have to put a little bit of heat on it because there's a lot of um, a lot of metal here. Okay, we're getting there. A little bit of flux. These barrels are going to have to be completely taken back down again, restruck. So I'm well aware of the fact that what I'm doing could be construed as a bit of a a, um, a finish screw up. But in this particular case, we are starting from the beginning. And I understand the fact that the barrels are going to have to be refinished. Okay, so we'll just keep fluxing them here. And eventually, the solder will melt and these suckers will just go together. And we're getting close. Now, the way to know you're getting close, grab a little bit of solder here. Okay. Just see whether or not it's melting yet under its own latent heat. Get close. All right, you see we got a little bit of melt in now. That's melting. Okay, just melt that in. Get it on the other side. As I can touch the barrel and the solder melts in by itself without the flame in the, in the way, that's when you know you're getting there. And if we've done our homework, this whole thing should just close up into one nice tight joint. melting in now all by itself and it just gets sucked right up underneath there and so that's that end just melts right down in there in there and then everything just takes off okay now the breech end here is the tough end because this is where all the mass is and it's just sucking this the heat of this torch up there we go get down there good now as that solder comes spattering out it's not sticking to anything because we've gone ahead and put the sharpie marker all over everything we didn't want it to stick to which is gonna make clean up a bit of a snap. So we'll just keep working down the barrel. The real question becomes, am I gonna get away with taking that clamp off? And the answer is probably yes. Probably got away with that. And when you 
you scratch it with this stick, it drags the um, it drags the solder down into that joint. Okay. And then we get them. That's why clamping it into that barrel together becomes such a big deal. You gotta watch this rib doesn't roll. You, you gotta watch this rib doesn't just roll. It'll, it'll roll up the sidewall. You just gotta watch it doesn't do that. So we'll let it set. Okay, you see, we're not really wearing this out real hard as we're sitting down on this. And we'll just use a very, very light amount of spring tension and sit down on it just enough. If you clamp on them too much, then they, um, they'll, they'll spread apart. And then you got that problem going on. A little bit more flux. Yeah. Okay. And that means once that sets up, see, this clamp isn't even doing anything. You can leapfrog down the barrel then. So with this scraper tool, this tip, since it's sharp, as I scrape down in, any oxidation that's gotten in the way gets scraped out of the way, and it usually results in the, uh, in the solder just following the tip. Yep. Perfect. So it should ring even without the bottom on. And we'll ring them and show everybody what it sounds like when they ring right. And maybe by Tuesday, I will have gotten a hold of Brian. And Brian has got a 1960s Con Strobo Tuner. And I would love to put this thing on that Strobo Tuner and see the, um, see all the overtones and all the resonance and watch them ring like a, watch them ring like a choir bell. Anyway, you gotta have a vice. You gotta understand what a clean joint looks like. I mean, you gotta be, um, you gotta be patient. So we had a total of what about four hours in the shop in this. There we go. This clamp is key because it keeps this from just taking off that way because eventually we're gonna melt that solder joint. And uh, yeah, look at that. It's just basically sitting down there. Okay. And we're not turning the barrels colors. The solder's just melting on its own. But because we're not having to get the, the solder to try to stick to the steel right now, the solder only has to stick to itself. This turns into a far less hair raising. Now, if this is one of those old Belgian ones that I've seen, they braise them at the rear, braise them at the front, braise the ribs, braise everything. They tie all this in together, throw it in an oven, turn it yellow, and it all brazes. Um, that's why I'm really not afraid about putting a little bit of heat on these things. We ain't gonna kill them. This is where this is not where you learn how to solder. And the first time you shoot a set of tubes that have been this far apart, they got the gun's gotta go on a test stand. We'll put it back on that on that one we tested the Mosin on. And we'll put this thing upright and pop the first two rounds in the dirt. Just to make sure these pigs don't park company on us. Alright. So then the muzzle gets its own special treatment. Because we, um, we're going to want to we put the bottom rib on and then we'll fill all this up full of solder. So I'm just going to tack this rib down up at the muzzle right now and we'll come back to it because we've got to fill all this up inside here with, with solder. And again, there's a hundred different ways to do this. But what we'll wind up doing is taking a piece of steel wool and pushing it back behind the uh, front sight post. 
and then we'll just fill it up full of solder and then pound it down flat and file it. All right. And we take this extra solder here and just whip this out of the way. Ordinarily when I'm alone, I would just hit this with some compressed air, but then I would be spattering you down with solder. So I have to constantly remind myself to not hose my videographer just because I'm not used to being there. It's a, it's a nice touch. It keeps you wanting to come back. Details, you know. Okay. Then once that sets, I'm going to take this clamp off. And then go back and work that, and then this will stay hard enough. I won't have to worry about it, but it's still wet. And then we got to remember when the bottom rib goes on that you've got to capture all of this up top. So you got to make sure you got it locked. I won't take this clamp off till I'm all the way done. And then we'll just file that little nick off, and it'll be close enough. This is not. Um, This Riverside's got issues in the stock area. All right, so we're just waiting for this now to set up. It's getting there. That's liquidus now. That's getting a little bit pulpy. Okay, and once it sets, and yeah, we're gonna have some metal cleanup we're gonna have to do. We're gonna have to do all that, but you get a problem on the older guns that have been refinished a couple of times, like the older English guns, where this area of the barrel right here has been filed several times. And you can't just do an ID minus OD and come up with the barrel wall thickness because it's, it isn't concentric anymore. Um, that's a point to remember if you're like going to do choke tubes, but that's a, that's a video for a long time from now. Okay, we'll just get up underneath here right where that clamp was. up there. I don't want this to melt again or else it'll pop. There we go. Okay. set up that's still shiny it's still liquid so I don't want to hit it yet or I'll move it the other thing with solder is you never want to disturb solder when it's liquidous when it's changing phases and going from liquid to solid if you pop it there you'll get a cold joint um, even if it's wet both sides the uh, metal the metallurgical properties of the lead tin will get really weird on you and it'll it, it almost looks like it's been um, you know brittle fractured it's that real frosty look you definitely see right now it's still liquid here. We got some extra solder up here on the surface. We're just gonna have to get rid of it. It burned through the um, it burned through the sharpie, but it beats the heck out of having to clean this entire thing up. You know what I mean? Just making sure we're touching down everywhere. All right. Oh yeah. That's opposed to say the barrels on the Parker, right? These, they're dead, but these are alive. And once these cool down enough, I can grab them. We'll pick them up off the vise and we'll see whether or not they ring or not. If it isn't one solid mass and everything goes into its different, its own vibrational node and it just kills it kills the um the resonance all right so let's do this let me get a good jump on this here so without the rag touching it i still need to be able to hang it and we'll see what this is gonna do oh yeah so that ring and if they weren't solid, they would sound like they would sound kind of like this. But instead, they're ringing. That means we got this rib tied on all the way. Hoorah! Let's get this thing cleaned up. 
All right, so these things have cooled down enough to uh, show you something else now we got to consider. This is the lump right here that ties the receiver and the barrels together. So let me get my fingers out of the way here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. That snaps down on that and actually locks this all together. These move. These things move. They slide back and forth. The solder breaks loose. We can see this big lump of detritus here, this whole piece of solder. Um, resist the temptation to take a TIG welder and tack weld that in. If you're going to do that, you better know how to take care of the inside of the barrel because you'll get a lot of heavy duty oxidation there. And there's always the ever present fear that you might actually blow a hole through this barrel and destroy all this. The reason why I'm bringing it up now is on other guns, this is actually got a reverse curve to it this way and this way and the barrels are actually pinching it in. On this one, it's just a single curve. We could heat this up right now and pop it right out. So the time to decide whether or not this is in the right spot or not is right now before you put this rib on and that should have just enough tension on it to keep this from falling off. And this is in exactly the right spot, so we're good. So what's left here is going to be to put the bottom rib on and then assemble all this, carry it out and run it on a test stand once just to make sure that all this doesn't part company with itself. So let's look at the top now. We've got this all cleaned up. And yeah, there are gaps in it where things have been beat on before and some things have been moved around, but by and large, we're done here. The solder is tight. The joint is complete all the way down to the bottom. I've used a variety of pointed tools to come in and strip this solder out until there's a very thin line there and if you don't do that when you go to blue these things you'll know you'll see a big fat spot of solder i think there's some right up here that has to get cleaned out that got caught up underneath this rib but by and large the top of this is done we'll do the bottom um, and it's just simple soldering And we're going to stop here because I want to show you something about all those little balls of solder snot that we got to get out before we uh, get out of this problem. There are a lot of these little balls of, of solder that ball up here. They're all over this thing and they're all up inside the rib. So what I meant was we're going to tip this down, let anything that's inside this rib knock out. Then we're going to tip the barrel straight up in the air. And as we're locking this down, we're gonna fill in this area here in between these two and, and cap all that off. So I gotta wait for this to cool off, then we'll reposition vertically in the lathe. So this hot, sticky mess right here represents what we have left, the muzzles. All right, and we have a gap here and we have a gap here. And the rib has come down to the end and it's all kind of tied up and it's, it's never gonna meet down here. It's never gonna go on the same way twice. So barely out of scene here, you see this right down here. I've got a clamp right there, clamped across this to keep this span-wise tight. And then this clamp is holding the ribs where I want it. So when the solder melts a little bit, that clamp down there on the bottom is our insurance policy that these things just won't take off on us. So I take just a little wad of steel wool and I stuff it down there in that hole so that we're not trying to fill this entire rib up full of solder. Now I'm sure this is where the English, the London trained gunsmiths are gonna pop in here and they're gonna go, that's not the way that's done. And it may not be, but the difference is, is that I do two to three of these a month and you guys get to do maybe one or two of them a year and you get paid appropriately. I'm not being paid $3,000 to solder this pair of ribs because um, we have to get on with it over here because hunting season is actually getting ready to begin and you know we're all allowed to hunt over here so that's pretty cool um so yeah there's a lot of different ways to do this and i'm sure i'm not doing it the technically correct way but it's the way i want to do it so we're at the end and here's the story on this gun a customer brought this gun in and i think it would this guy's pretty old this guy had first class tickets on the arc 
and he brought this gun in and he wanted it redone and it was beyond this outfit's 25 year old gunsmith's ability to do they called me to ask and bid putting the gun back in the field i said okay and i gave him a, a pretty stiff number because it was going to take a lot of effort to put this together well this particular firm got a little impatient and they pretty much screamed and yelled at their guy loud enough that their guy tried to do this gun and he tried to he tried to uh, do the do the wood he tried to do the metal and when he tried to do the metal the only thing he knew how to do was hot dip something so he attempted to hot dip this gun and the barrels fell apart and they got rid of him before they've called me now I have no idea this is going on they got rid of him hang on a minute I'm getting some solder prepped here and they brought another guy in who I might add wound up being one of my apprentices and he's really good so the guy they brought in he was just out of gunsmithing school he was 21 or so and he took one look at this and said, okay, I need help. He hadn't met me yet. So the first thing he did was, is he went back to one of his instructors at the school that he had graduated from. And the instructor at the school and my young apprentice proceeded to screw this thing up the second time. And it's, I'm telling you, if you're looking for a good gunsmith in school it doesn't just because someone's teaching at one of those schools doesn't necessarily mean he knows what he's doing and I would have to tell you that the guy that messed this thing up the second time messed up a stock for a Fox Model B I paid him a lot of money and gave him a lot of walnut to do a stock on an LC Smith that was a disaster I had to take that back and then um, I got another L.C. Smith from another gunsmithing uh, firm that needed me to, to do that because someone had screwed up the stock. Guess what? But they were smart enough to not tell me it was this guy. And then uh, this set of barrels. So that's three stocks and a set of barrels. And we're all messed up by the same guy. So just because someone has the credentials doesn't necessarily mean that they know what they're doing. The only thing that produces true credentials is whether or not you can actually get the work done or not. So that's the story here. This thing was messed up by three people that supposedly knew what they were doing and they'll hold themselves out as a credentialed members of the community. And I'll tell you this, if you look at their hammer faces, they're not polished. That's how you tell. All right, so we filled that up full of steel wool. We filled this end cap up full of solder. You just get it to melt. And you pound it down into that, into that recess, and it'll sit flat. And it'll tighten everything up here. Okay, and we're going to let that cool off. <laughs> clean it up and we'll just take a little whirly gig doodle here we'll go ahead in here and just peel this out let's put a slight reverse camper on this so you can see here that that's starting to clean up Cut in the opposite direction and hold it until all of those previous marks disappear. Now, all 
all this is chattering because I got it sticking up out of the vise a long way so that you all can see it. As we're starting to milk all this off, you'll see that this solder will start coming down smooth and you wind up with this nice looking muzzle here. Now we got a little bit of a run out there. So while I'm on either side and I'm checking to make sure that this thing is flat this way and that it's flat this way. So you can draw file these. You can There we go. Now we're down flat. Now we're down flat. We got to bring the muzzle to the top down just a little bit more. Okay, so that surface is that way. That surface is that way. We're just about there. We got to go this way just a little bit. Okay. And then we put a little bit of um, grit paper on our file here. And we just take a little bit of this crocus cloth here and just kind of... There you go. And they shine right up. You get to actually get a usable set of muzzles out of those. Before we blue these things, we really need to get this sucker up on a test stand and run it. So we'll shoot this gun. We'll run around out of each barrel. Make sure the ribs, you know, don't wind up in Mexico somewhere. We have the completed tubes hung in the test stand here because we want to find out whether or not the tubes are going to hang together. There's another test I'm going to do. I'm only going to load one round and cock both hammers because I'd like to see just if the disturbance sets one off. Let me make sure it locks shut. This isn't the tightest gun on the planet. Um, okay. That was the forward trigger. We're going to do that one first. Okay, it stayed on a test stand, not bad. The other hammer stayed hung. This round looks good. Let's go for the left barrel. There. I'm gonna cock both hammers again. Oh, it looks like the tie wraps took it in his shorts, but it hung, it hung around. Let's have a look here. Open this up. Yeah, pops right out. Nothing expanding, nothing weird. Since the tie wraps have done almost all of the work of uh, cutting themselves loose, we'll just cut them loose here and take a look at these tubes. Let's pop them off. So if the solder held, they should still ring like a bell. And that little rattle you're hearing is the ejector. Yeah, so these hung up. Outstanding. Let's get them inside and blow them, maybe. Here we have it. Um, we sandblasted and blued because when they were buffed, they were all wavy, and you got to knock the sheen off of these things. Um, so here's the fun part about this. At the end of the day, we've expended all of that labor to get this job back to where it was when I bid it originally which was to fix hosed up wood and correct a couple of things. Um, and all of this effort, um, just to get back to zero. There's effort you expend when you're learning something and then there's effort you expend where you're not learning anything. This pile of springs right here, this is a pile of springs. I don't know if you can see this. All of them are broken, screwed up or dejected. And 
This is one of the guys that I'm teaching how to make springs and how to build his own gun. Um, and he made all of these mistakes. And then he fixed four revolvers and a long gun. Um, so he was learning. He was making mistakes and learning. He's made more mistakes. How many guys? He made a hand for a revolver. It wasn't right, but he made a hand for it. Then when he made the second hand, it worked. So the real question becomes is, you know, have you made enough mistakes, have qualified, have learning anything? I would certainly hope so. Get out there, grab some tools and get on with it. There are no real mistakes. There are merely negative outcomes. Go make a few, learn something. Cause if you ain't screwing up, you ain't learning anything. And it's been a pleasure to solder a set of ribs for you guys. And like I said, unless you got a pair of stones, a crane and a big cargo net, I don't recommend you do it.